Hello there, and welcome to another Mad Machines uh, video. Uh, it's Charlie here, um, and today we're going to be looking at the record knitting machine. Uh, now, this is actually a slightly unusual video in that, for the first time, I'm not actually knitting just a tension swatch to show you, I'm actually knitting a thing, uh, knitting a little top for my daughter. Um, and I thought I'd have a go on this machine just to see how much quicker than, let's say, hand knitting it is. Um, I think the first thing to say about this machine is that it's not really a knitting machine. I would say it's more of a sort of semi-automatic garter bar. But that gives us the clues to the second thing, which is that um, it is a garter machine. It will happily do garter stitch. It will do stocking stitch as well. But you will see um, when we use it uh, just how it works. And it is not fast. But it is fun. Um, the other thing to say is that there is no row counter whatsoever. So I have got one of these, which is just um, a couple of the things that uh, bouncers used to count people into nightclubs. And every time I do a row, I just click it. So to knit a row, what I do is I move the black dog across. And what you should be able to see is that it's pushed out a whole bunch of little sinkers. Um, and if I lay the yarn in between the sinkers and these pegs and then move it back again, it will create a zigzag. Like so. OK, so now I've just got zigzags on the top of this. And all I do to do my row is I pull the knitting over the top of the pins, which creates the next row of knitting. Now, I'm doing this very, very loose because my daughter likes to have clothes with a very, very loose drape. Um, and you always get a problem on this last stitch, which sometimes goes and sometimes doesn't. There you go, it's gone. OK, and once I've pulled it across, I can take the bar off, push the knitting down, turn it over. And there we go, one row knitted. I can then clip my clicker um, and then I'm ready to begin the whole process all over again. So off we go. And lay in the yarn. You can see this is not a fast device, but then I guess it's not really supposed to be. Um, and it's nice and good fun to use. Um, and you can just sort of get on with it. Um, this is not going to be knitting. I mean, my guess is it's certainly faster than I could hand knit, but I'm guessing there are hand knitters out there that wouldn't be too much slower than this machine. So it's not sort of major, major sort of step forward in technology, but it, what, it's what there was in the 1950s. Um, and actually, again, like a lot of these machines, there's a simple pleasure to using it. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to stop this video in a minute and I'm going to restart it when I get something exciting like dividing for a neckline or increasing stitches or something. We're going to see just how practical a machine like this is to actually knit a garment on. Um, so what I'll do, I'll do one more row and then I shall stop the video and we shall uh, come back when we've got an appropriate number of rows um, that we need that we need to increase. Oh, I think it's increase first, and then um, split the neck. I should point out I'm not actually doing this to a pattern. I'm just knitting um, freestyle, so I'm going to have to keep a uh, close eye on how many rows I've knitted so that I don't then um, knit a, a wonky garment. But there we go. So I'll just complete this row, like so, and then pop the row counter, and I shall see you in quite a few rows time when it starts time to start doing something else apart from straight knitting. Right, um, hello, welcome back. Uh, for you, it's about three seconds has passed. For me, this is three and a half hours of knitting later, but I have now done, as you can see on this counter, 100 rows. Uh, I am not 
convinced this is hugely faster than hand knitting, but I think it's faster than hand knitting, and it's certainly faster than using a garter bar uh, on a brother machine, although you'd be slightly mad to try and knit an entire top using a garter bar. However, I'm at the point where I want to increase um, for the uh, sleeves, so I'm just going to put cast on using ERAP another four stitches, I think, just to get a little cap on the sleeve, nothing big. Okay, um, shall I do four or shall I do five? No, I think four is good enough. Okay, and once I've done that, what I then do is I then take this like I'm doing another row, or well, I am doing another row, um, back again. Okay, and then there we go. But this time, as well as lifting over the um, the knitting as before, uh, I'm also going to have to manually hoik these over. Now I've done this rather tight, which is slightly silly of me, but there you go. But they will loosen up significantly um, because the stitch size is really, really big. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise these stitches up and I'm going to put the bar of both stitches across there. And I'm going to have to get this bar all the way up over here, and as I say, I've done it fairly tight. It's not too horrific, um, like so, and like so, and then I've just got the last one to do this one, like so, and then like so. What I will say is because I haven't cleaned this up yet, I'm getting rust stains on there, but that's not the end of the world. Okay, now I've done that bit, so now I'm going to lift over this entire thing like I've been doing for the last 100 rows. And we'll pull it up and over. And for the next few rows, I'm going to have to do the increases with the hook rather than pulling it up because I won't have enough knitting to physically pull it up and over. So that is that pulled up and over. And then what I do is I take it off the machine, okay, pull it down. This one needs to be pulled down manually. And by the time you get to quite a few rows, the actual weight of the knitting will pull down the thing for you. Um, now then, I've got to do the same to this end as well. I'm also going to, I've been putting a stitch marker every 20 rows just to keep me on the straight and narrow. So I'll put a stitch marker in here, and then again, I'm going to try and e-wrap rather more loosely this time. One, two, three, it was four, wasn't it? Four. And that was my 101st row that I did. And this should be row number 102. And once I've done this, I'm just going to get on and... Uh, go for another however many I think it's 60 rows and then I'll be back to show you how I'm going to split the neck oh, some free yarn. and again on this occasion I'm going to have to use the pick to go over this so we will go one and two well, that's easier one two one two okay and then i shall probably have to use the pick at this end at the other end as well so let's have a look and see so it needs to go i'm sort of able to do it by hand there you go that's over Let's see that's over and there we go i can now carry on as per usual so i'm going to go for another 60 rows and i shall see you when it's time to divide to the neck Hello again. Um, I imagine it's been 10 seconds for you, but actually this is the following day. 
for me. Um, and what you find me doing is uh, latching up the um, uh, the center part of this garment such that I can cast off to the neck at the back. Um, I'm then going to uh, uh, knit up the sides and increase um, towards the middle such that um, everyone there be four rows such that you end up with good luck with a sort of v-neck arrangement going on that at least is the hope now one thing about this machine is that it does not have a holding position of any sort so if you want to do things like that you actually have to take stitches off on a um, on a stitch holder which i will do in a second um, however, having said that, I told you last time that it took me something like three and a half hours to do the first 100 rows. I'm actually now having done 160 rows, and it did get very significantly faster um, towards the end of it. So I think with a bit of experience, you can get this machine... Hello again, um, and I imagine it's been seconds for you, but this is actually the next day for me. And what you find me doing is latching off um, the middle section of this so I can create the back of a neckline. And then I can knit up um, either side, increase on the in the middle uh, one stitch every four rows or so, and I'll end up with a V-neck with a bit of luck. Um, now, couple of things to say about this machine. It does not have um, a holding position, so I'm going to have to take the um, uh, the outer stitches of one side off on a stitch holder, but that's fine. Um, and the other thing to say is that I've actually got very significantly faster at this um, over the last few rows. I did tell you that initially it, um, it took me somewhere in the region of uh, three and a half hours to do the first 100 rows, well, the good news now is that the last 60 rows I did were very significantly faster than that. Um, so I reckon with a bit of practice, you could probably get this machine um, as, well, certainly much faster than hand knitting. Um, and, you know, it's never going to be sort of brother punch card speed. But if you think about it, 160 rows um, and it's garter stitch. So on a, on a brother machine, you'd have to be doing some sort of, you know, punch card tuck stitch pattern to be sort of mock garter stitch so you'd probably be talking a few hundred rows um for the brother one but even at its slowest i mean that's never going to take you more than 20 minutes so um you know i think we have to have to concede that this is not a fast machine um on the other hand i am quite enjoying using it um even with this rather garish and cheap and rather splitty yarn um so we will see the other thing to say, of course, is that putting this onto a onto a stitch hanger is significantly less onerous than um, than on a machine where the stitches sit on hooks, because um, the because they're just on nails, I can slide them all off and up and down as I wish. So actually, you can see I'm going reasonably well with this stitch hanger. This is literally the first time I've done it because obviously I'm doing it for the first time for you guys. Um, so it shouldn't be too horrific. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this left hand side off completely and that will just leave me with the right hand side where I can do some uh, some increasing and I'm going to increase on the side of the yarn on the side of the knitting that the yarn isn't if you see what I mean um, because I'm going to do it by the single single stitch method the unfashioned method of um, just uh, um, moving the stitch across and then picking up the heel of the stitch next to it and popping that on the peg and I shall do it and I shall let you know how it goes and I shall set up again and show you a couple of rows of me doing it and then with a bit of luck once I've done both sides and they've come to a V I will then be able to carry on as before and knit down the front of the jumper. Um, this is where having two of the clickers, two of these, is going to be useful because um, I am going to be able to count rows on one of them and count my increases on the other just to make sure that I have in fact done it properly. So we will see. Now let's see if this will come off nicely. Look at that. All popping off nicely. 
Right, so this is where I have got to. Um, I thought you might like to uh, sort of hear a couple of my thoughts about this machine before um, I carry on knitting. But um, some things about this machine. There are some things that I love. There are some things that are highly frustrating. So one of the things that is a bit frustrating is that, of course, it's very, very easy to catch all these pegs on the uh, you know, catch the yarn and all the pegs of the machine. So there are bits, places where it's where, where the knitting is pulled a bit. Um, the next thing to say is that this is the easily the worst piece of machine knitting I've ever done in my life. Now that's not the machine's fault. That's just because it's totally different from any other machine and uh, any other machine. So I've I've had to relearn how to do it all over again. But um, you can see what I've done basically is I've cast off the middle section. I took all this lot off onto a onto a stitch holder and then knitted this increasing until I got to the middle. Then I put these took these off on the stitch holder, put these back on and knitted again until I got back to the middle. Um, and so with a bit of luck, where I should be now is basically just needing to knit. Well, I need to knit this to 60 rows and then I can reset and then I can knit another 80 rows and then I will be done. Now, some things I've noticed that made it easier. Um, what I did was um, I I won't uh, haven't done it here, but I will show you what I did do. And that's roll up the knitting and pin it in place. Um, and that actually I, I find makes it easier to control because actually the knitting itself um, is relatively heavy by this point and um, quite tends to flop down quite heavily. So I've done that. And if I show you me doing this row, this is the first row where I've joined them back together again. You can see that actually, because I've knitted this very loose, I haven't made this easy for myself. Because I've knitted this very loose, actually there is a real tendency for it to not want to go over the over the pins. Um, if I was a bit tighter on the tension, this would be easier. But also, um, uh, doing things like you know, this is the sort of thing you only find out when you're not just doing a tension swatch. Um, but it is um, working. Uh, as I say, I've got better with the knitting as I went on. Uh, it has to be said, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I've got a lot faster since uh, since I started. So this left hand side, I only started uh, less than an hour ago, um, and I've got it completely done. So actually, um, I think you would get this reasonably fast after a time. Uh, what else? Well, it's quiet and it's fun. It's got some really annoying stuff, like um, on this side, on the other side, there's a dot. I'll show it to you when I turn it around. And it's important sometimes to have a dot facing you and sometimes to have a dot not facing you, so you can tell whether you're on an even or an odd row, and that's absolutely fine. But let me show you one thing I find... Sorry, I was interrupted by a friend ringing. Let me show you something that I find extremely irritating about the dot. Um, if I just do this row, and then I'll show you... Um, by the way, when I split, one thing I did find is that with a lot of weight pulling sideways on the knitting, because obviously I was doing one side or the other, um, the end stitches really didn't like coming over, so I sometimes had to hand tool the end two or even three stitches, uh, which did slow down the process somewhat. But if I turn it round and put it back on the machine, you would think if they're going to put, go to the trouble of putting a dot on the machine, they would put it on the centre of the machine. But the centre of the machine is there, and the dot is there. Um, which is why this isn't entirely as symmetrical <laughs> as I would like it to be. So what I'm going to do now is now knit another bajillion rows, um, and I shall get back to you when it's done, and you can see the this mildly horrific garment in all of its glory. Okay, um, I think I've come to the end of this video, um, filmed in several parts over several days, um, and I've got a few conclusions to draw uh, about this machine. So the first thing to say um, is that I have really enjoyed using it and it's been great fun. Uh, this is not a well knitted garment and partly that's me and partly that it is getting used to the machine. Um, you might be able to see that I've backstitched um, off this uh, uh, the uh, um, last row there. Um, I mean also I put it on far too high a tension really for the quality of the yarn which is quite low quality yarn and so it has split in several places. But um, it's been thoroughly enjoyable to use, and I have managed to do quite a lot of um, uh, of garter stitch. I mean, if I unroll it, and maybe if I hold it up 
on the camera. I haven't actually seen this at all yet. I've literally not done this, not unrolled it since I, um, oops, I need to pause on this, this is back again, but since I started. But actually, I mean, that is quite a lot of garter stitch. Uh, it also has to be said, by the way, that um, uh, I wouldn't have chosen this yarn if I knew it would turn out like that, but there you go. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off the the uh, comb like that. And um, let's see how much it actually looks like it might sock into a garment. As I say, though, this is not my finest moment knitting wise, but it does look like a garment, doesn't it? It does look like a dress just about. Um, so it's supposed to be longer at the back than it is at the front. Um, uh, and um, I think that uh, this machine could turn out some really nice garments once I got some practice on it. Uh, it's not fast, very much not fast, but I got significantly faster at it the more I did. Um, and it has to be said that the uh, stocking stitch is significantly faster. And I won't do any knitting on the stocking stitch, but let me just show you the comb, because what you do in the stocking stitch one, I put that there, is you slide out um, the finger pegs, then you put in the yarn, and you use the white knob to slide them back in again, and then you just tip the stitches over the top, and then same thing back. So actually, okay, that's that's going to be not as fast as a normal knitting machine, but but not too bad. Um, uh, I really enjoyed using it, and again, when I put it off on my website, it won't be for very much money, I don't think, probably under a hundred pounds. Um, and I will clean it up, but uh, I will leave it up to whoever buys it whether they want things like the original knobs from here, which I do have, but they are made of pewter covered in leaded paint, they're not brilliant. Um, and these, this knob here, you can see, is or maybe you can't see, you can see it's sort of slightly cracked in places, the paint's cracked, and again, it's lead paint. So I shall leave it up to the um, buyer whether they want to uh, have me uh, recover the knobs in non-lead paint and 3D print some knobs or whether they're happy with the original. Um, but I really enjoyed this. Uh, it's an interesting process um, and it's not a replacement for a knitting machine, but it is good fun. So if you've got the need to knit an enormous amount of garter stitch, faster than you could do with a garter bar and faster than you could do by hand, and probably faster than you could do with a garter carriage, to be fair, then this might be the machine for you. Um, thank you very much for watching. I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.